The Hitler Paradox, written by James Hughes. Interior Hitler Study, Afternoon, Chapter 4. A grandfather clock ticks against the concrete wall. The time is 2.28 p.m. The study is cramped with oversized furniture. A door to Hitler's bedroom remains ajar beside the clock. A portrait of Frederick the Great decorates the wall among various other stolen art pieces. Text, Hitler's Bunker, Berlin, Germany, April 30th, 1945. German-speaking voices echo through the corridor outside the room. Soft weeping breaks through the chatter. With a small, subtle fizzle, a man wearing a reflective suit and a small black device strapped to his wrist appears from thin air. This is Tium, 40s, our first time traveler. Tium aims his wrist device around like a weapon, a puzzled look on his face as he notices the empty room. Damn, I'm too early. Tium moves to the hallway door and peers around the corner. Interior, bunker, corridor, afternoon. Tium pokes his head out of the study. He can see Hitler and his wife, Eva, as they say their final farewells to other members of the SS party on the far side of the long corridor. An electric crackling begins to break the air inside the room behind him. Cautious of being discovered, Tium quickly pulls his head back inside the room. Interior, Hitler's study, afternoon. Tium quickly shuts the door as another man wearing a more modern outfit, jeans and a t-shirt, appears in the center of the study. A massive metal contraption strapped to one of his arms and a six-bullet revolver held in the other. This is Johnny, 30s, our second time traveler. Johnny turns around to see Tium standing at the door. You fucker! That shit wasn't funny! There were dinosaurs, man, like everywhere! I could've died! Okay, okay, just shut up. Seriously not cool! Tium tries to quiet Johnny by covering his mouth. Get off me, man! What's your problem? Wait, where'd Hitler go? He's outside, with the entire SS leadership. Oh shit, really? Yes, really. And he'll be walking in here any second, so we need to hide now. What? Why? Let's just kill them all now. And threaten our very existence? I think not. Besides, you have one gun and what, like six bullets? There are at least 15 people in this bunker. Really? How do you know that? Did you do any research? You don't seem to know anything about this place. Hey man, I just came to kill that bastard Hitler. It's not that simple. You can't just... Footsteps echo through the corridor as they move closer. We've got to hide. Quick, the bedroom, go. Tium pushes Johnny into the bedroom. Interior, Hitler's bedroom, afternoon. Tium and Johnny rest against the wall beside the door. The bedroom is cramped and dimly lit. A queen-size bed sits in the center, a night table and lamp on one side and an oxygen tank on the other. Tium turns and peeks out the narrow opening of the door. He watches as Hitler and Eva enter the study. They sit on the couch and begin to converse in German. Hey man, listen. Tium pulls back to look at Johnny, signaling to keep quiet. Sorry for pulling my gun earlier. I kind of got caught up in the moment, you know. Shh, whatever. I mean, it wasn't cool. Okay, just keep it down. That's it? That's all you gotta say? What do you want me to say? I don't know, man. Maybe, hey, Johnny, I'm sorry, you know, for sending you 200 million years in the past. Yeah, all of that. Just sh sh just shut up. I'm trying to listen. Why? What are they saying? Why doesn't that surprise me? You don't speak a lick of German, don't you? No. Why? Do you? Yes, because I'm qualified for this mission. Dude, English, please? How did you discover time travel? Oh, I didn't. My smart-ass cousin did. It's pretty cool, though, right? Cool? It's irresponsible for you to be freely moving through time. What year are you even from? 2028, you? Doesn't matter. Hey, man, I told you my year. Quiet. We can't get caught, or we'll screw everything up. Oh, come on. He's guilty as fuck. Let's just kill him now. I told you, it doesn't work like that. There's a system. He has to... Tium notices the talking has stopped. He turns and looks at the narrow gap in the door as Hitler and Eva begin walking toward the bedroom. They're coming. Hide. Tium and Johnny scramble to hide in the only place they can, under the bed. Their heads lay at the foot of the bed as they watch two pairs of feet enter the room. Eva, off screen, always in German. This is likely our last moments of life. Of course, we should consummate our marriage. She pushes Hitler down onto the bed, his feet resting before Tium and Johnny's heads. No, 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 there must be some insurrection within the enemy! Eva pushes Hitler back across the bed as she climbs atop him. No, this ain't cool. With a finger pressed against his lips, Tium shushes Johnny. A pair of men's tightly, tidy whities drop down to the floor above their heads. 
Johnny points at the underwear in disgust as the bed begins to bounce up and down. No, 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 no. Suddenly, the bed stops. What is wrong, dear? Tium and Johnny sit in silence, careful not to make a sound. Adolf, my sweet. I can't! I told you this with a block! I'm too stressed! Hitler climbs from the bed, pants in hand, as he grabs his underwear from the floor and heads for the door in a huff. Johnny peeks out just as Hitler's bare ass storms out of the bedroom. I'm sorry, my love. I thought this would help. Eva follows suit, still wearing her modest dress, though now a little disheveled as she follows him, leaving the door slightly opened as before. Hitler couldn't get it on. Seems that way. They climb out from under the bed as yelling begins from out in the study. Tion peeks out the narrow gap as Hitler buckles his pants while arguing with Eva. Serves him right. What an asshole. Why do you want to kill him? Dude, it's Hitler. Yes, but what's the reason you want to do it? I don't know. I just I made a list, you know, and he was right at the top. Really? That's it? That's why? You made a list? Yeah, and Hitler's numero uno. Can I see the list? Johnny pulls a crumpled piece of paper from his pocket. Here it is. Hitler, Jeffrey Dahmer, Vlad the Impaler. Who's the guy that runs FIFA? I don't remember his name exactly, but I'll know him when I see him. You're a moron. Hey man, fuck you, that's just me. Johnny snatches the list back from Tion as crying can be heard coming from the study. Tion peeks out at Hit as Hitler and Eva sit on the couch hugging. Be brave, my love. I'll see you in the next life. Okay, it's happening. We'll need to take him as soon as he's alone. We can't risk running into our future, um, past selves. Otherwise, this whole mission has been pointless. What? Why? What happens? You really wouldn't understand. Oh, come on. Try me. We'll end up breaking the time-space continuum, catapulting us to our original timelines, making me have to start this whole process over again, causing my people millions in taxpayer dollars and really just a big fucking headache. Very much like you're being right now. Okay, okay, whatever, man. A dying gurgle comes from the study. By the way, it's called the space-time continuum. Thank you. I have a migraine now. This world did not deserve our glory! Tium rushes out of the room to stop Hitler as Johnny follows. Interior, Hitler's study. Tium knocks Hitler's pistol from his hand as he points his wrist device at him, freezing him in place with a faint blue glow. Hitler, you're under arrest for crimes against humanity. Or you're dead, it's still open for debate. No, it's not. He's under arrest. What's going on? Who are you? I'm just saying we could shoot him right now in this whole thing. I demand answers! Will everyone just shut up? I've trained my whole life to apprehend evil men like this. No one is going to stop me from completing this mission. Absolutely no one. Suddenly, an electric crackle begins to break the air behind Tio. Fuck! My Interior, Hitler's Steady Afternoon, Chapter 3. The grandfather clock ticks loudly against the concrete wall as an electric crackle breaks the air. The time is 2.41 p.m. Johnny appears, then quickly soon after, Tuyum fizzles in beside him. You again? I could say the same to you. They turn to see Hitler sitting on the couch, a look of absolute confusion across his face as Eva lay dead beside him. Hitler quickly moves to grab his gun resting on the floor beside the coffee table. Freeze! Tuyum freezes Hitler as he stands awkwardly in place, once again in the blue glow of the wrist device. Oh, come on. You said I could have him. No, sir. I simply said you may have that particular Hitler in that specific moment. What? It was already dead. I can't kill a dead Hitler. Again, not my problem. Hitler, you're under arrest for crimes against humanity. You're kidding, right? You want to arrest him? Of course. I'm here to take him back to my time, where he'll be tried for his crimes. That has to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What are you two babbling about? Free me from this magic at once! Oh, duh. Hitler, you're under arrest for crimes against humanity. Don't change the subject. What, you think he could be not guilty? No, of course not. Then shoot him dead, like now. I don't have the authority to execute him. He must stand trial before the Council of Humanity. The Council of Humanity? You're just making this shit up, aren't you? What? No, they govern our world with just and reason. How does that not sound stupid to you? My nose itches. They look at Hitler for a second, then resume their conversation. Our leaders are elected to guide us to a brighter future and a better world. How are you not getting this? I mean, I get it. It just sounds stupid is all. I can't scratch my nose! One second there, muchacho. Are they like aliens or super smart robots walking around in the future? 
No, not really. So, technically, wouldn't any council be a council of humanity? Who cares what they're called? You're missing the point. I think you're missing some screws, because the future sounds dumb as hell. It's unbattable. Okay, please stop insulting the future. Or what? You gonna freeze me to death? Hitler seems to be in so much agony. Hitler struggles, scrunching his face as he tries to scratch his nose. Yeah, well, maybe I will. Yeah, well, screw you. I came prepared, too. Johnny pulls a small, six-bullet revolver from his waistband, pointing it in the air. Hey, what are you doing? Tiom switches the freeze beam off of Hitler and onto Johnny. Hey, unfreeze me, you dick! I was just showing it to you! Hitler quickly reaches down for his pistol, but before he can stand up with it, Tiom freezes him in place once again. What did you expect? Hitler struggles to hold his pistol as it hangs upside down in his grip, aimed towards his head. Could you grab that gun away from me? Yeah, yeah. You're so demanding. Before Johnny can react, Hitler squeezes the trigger, shooting himself dead. Johnny jumps back as he looks at Hitler's lifeless body, still frozen in place. Oh shit! He shot himself again! Right? Again? Damn it. Everything's screwed up. Pretty sure you can unfreeze him. He looks pretty dead to me. Tium unfreezes Hitler. His body slumps down to the couch, his head slamming on the coffee table with a thud and his pistol landing beside his feet. I gotta fix this. I gotta go back further. Tium adjusts his wrist device to a new time. Oh yeah? Well, guess I'm going back too. Johnny turns a large dial on his contraption, then presses a button, causing it to hum very loudly. Tium looks at Johnny with a dumbfounded head tilt. Has to warm up. The air begins to spark and crackle around Johnny as the humming gets louder. Suddenly, Tiom cranks the large dial on Johnny's arm back. What the fuck? Johnny looks to Tiom, shocked as he disappears in time. Probably shouldn't have done that. Oh well. Time will tell. Tiom presses a button and blinks away with a subtle fizzle. Interior, Hitler's study, afternoon, chapter two. The grandfather clock ticks loudly once again against the concrete wall. The time is 2.46 p.m. Hitler lay sunken over as he was earlier, his head bleeding profusely, his pistol still beside his feet. With a fizzle, Tiom appears before Hitler's body. What the? How? This doesn't make any sense. He shouldn't kill himself till 3.30. Tiom checks the time on his wrist device when suddenly a loud crackle breaks the air behind him. What is going on here? After a few seconds, Johnny appears in the room. Oh, Jesus, man, you didn't kill them already. Oh, wow. Another time traveler. Uh, yeah, I guess. Seems you beat me to the punch, though. Tiom reaches out to shake Johnny's hand, whose arm is weighed down with the massive metal contraption. Hi, I'm Tiam. And you are? Johnny wipes some food residue off his hand before shaking. Sorry, I had some cheesy puffs earlier. Name's Johnny. That's some piece of hardware. Yeah, I know. Not very comfortable, but it gets the job done. What did you say your name was again? Tiam. Tiam? That's new. That, like, Tim and Tom combined? Precisely. Is that short for something? Yes, my full name is Tia Mateus. Tia it is then. They both look down at Hitler's corpse. Seems we may have a problem here. We both need a Hitler, right? No problem. He's all yours. Really? Well, that's awful kind of you. Thought we were going to have to have a whole debate about this. I'd hurry, though. These officers will be here any second. Wait. What? What officers? Suddenly, the door to the corridor <coughs> bangs loudly as SS officer and Hitler's valet, Heinz Linga, call out from the other side. Heinz Linga, always in German. Mein Führer? Are you okay? Heinz, and the boys waited about five minutes after Hitler shot himself. A little early by my calculations, but they're here. So good luck. I'll just be on my way. Tiom resets his wrist device and then disappears with a slight fizzle. The door bangs grow louder. Fuck me! Johnny turns the dial on his contraption and presses a button. It begins to hum louder and louder. Fetch the master key, quickly! Damn it, come on, come on! The device hits peak volume as Johnny disappears with a crackle of electricity just before the corridor door swings open. Interior house garage, evening, chapter one. A digital clock blinks, twelve as it sits on the side of a workbench. A man, late twenties, painstakingly, works on something in the middle of the garage. Various pieces of tech junk and open books scatter the area around him. He saw solders the inside of a metal contraption, the very same one Johnny wore. Wow, I think I did it. I think I figured it out. My greatest achievement may very well be sitting here in front of me now. The man climbs to his feet, anxiously excited. Okay, 
I'm one test away from making history. Suddenly, Tiong blinks into the room with Fizzle. Sorry, buddy. Tiong blows up the device with a small laser beam from his wrist device. You can thank Johnny for this. Tiong fizzles away as the man collapses to the ground, his life's work smoldering away before him. Johnny walks in front of the garage's back door. Yo, cuz, cheesy puffs? Oh man, what happened to your thingamabob? Credits.